Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar, uh, a series on using GovConnect Iowa. My name is Patrick Lintzman. I'm the Associate Director at the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center uh, at the University of Northern Iowa, and I will be your host slash facilitator uh, for today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be working with four different state agencies and covering um, how you can work with them through the GovConnect Iowa platform. Um, couple of the quick housekeeping things before we jump into the content as everyone's getting loaded. Um, this uh, webinar will be recorded and it will be available as a YouTube video uh, after the session. We'll do some editing, put some timestamps on it so you'll be able to um, we'll go back and watch the recording if you have to step out and, or miss a section or you want to go back and review something. Um, you've got that there. All of these slides for each of the individual uh, presentations from the agencies are available on iasourcelink.com. Uh, my colleague Sophie will be posting those in the chat. We'll be posting them as separate slide decks for each presentation, or you can go out to iasource and get download all four of the PDFs and just have them ready um, to roll as we kind of go through the sessions today. For questions, um, go ahead and please enter those into the Q&A box. Um, each of, there'll be a little bit of time um, at each of the end of the presentations to answer your questions. Um, we'll do our best to get to those. We are on a bit of a schedule today, and some of the presenters do have things uh, else that they have to do right when their portion is over. Um, so if we're not able to get to those, we'll be able to follow up with you um, at a later date. So on the behalf of Iowa SourceLink, um, Iowa Economic Development Authority, our partner in Iowa SourceLink, um, thanks for being here with us today. We'll go ahead and jump right into the uh, first portion of today's program. We've got um, the Department of Inspections and Appeals in Preston Moberly. Preston, thanks for being here and take it away. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Preston Moberly. I'm with the Iowa Department of Inspections and Appeals, and I'm with the licensing unit. And today we're going to talk about some of the new functionality with the round two of GovConnect Iowa. So we'll quickly go over the licenses that are eligible for renewal and how to use the DIA renewal form that is included in our renewal process on the GovConnect Iowa platform. We'll do a quick tutorial on the navigation of the GovConnect Iowa, and then finally I'll demonstrate a real quick overview of actually renewing a license on GovConnect Iowa. So in round one, we made eligible for renewal the food service and retail licenses. For round two, we have included all of our renewable license types with the exception of hemp. And right there with those three photos are just three examples of the licenses that are included. So currently we communicate to our customers that they're eligible for renewal using a renewal form, which is that snippet at the top right there. And you'll see highlighted the license number and the business code, which you can use those two pieces of information solely to renew on the GovConnect Iowa platform. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a license or a login on the GovConnect Iowa platform. And you're going to want to go to govconnect.iowa.gov and create login if this is your first visit. Once you start, you're going to come to these two questions right here. And for the purpose of renewing a license with the DIA, you're going to want to select no for both of these. And this will push you through to the other questions that are going to ask for uh, names and email addresses, et cetera. Once you've managed to answer all of those questions and you log in, you're going to meet this screen right here, and you're going to want to navigate down to the Manage State of Iowa Licenses. Within that box, you're going to click Iowa Department of Inspections and Appeals Food and Lodging tab, and then that will take you to this next picture where you're going to select the Renew Food and Lodging Licenses. Once you've selected that, you're going to have an option to renew one of two ways. On the box on the left, you're going to use that business code and license number, which was presented on that renewal form we give you. Or if you have a DIA username, you can use your username and a license number to renew. And depending on how you select this, you'll be presented the following screen one of two ways. So if you use just your business code and your license number, what's going to return is the license associated uh, with that license number and business code only. And so in this case, we're renewing a mobile food unit license, which we use the license number and the business code, which is found on that renewal document that we mail out. Now, if you have more than one facility or more than one business, think like a chain restaurant, 
you can connect all of your businesses together using a DIA username. If you haven't created one of those, you're going to want to go to iowa.foodsafeinspection.com. You'll need to create a login on this screen right here by clicking New Account. Once you log in, you'll see a box in the top right corner labeled Business Code. And this is where you can enter the business code for all of your locations, which you're going to find on your renewal. Once you do that, all of those locations will tie your licenses to your single username. So if you were to go back to that initial screen on the GovConnect Iowa platform and use your DIA username and a license number, it's going to return every facility associated with your username. That could be two facilities in this case, or it could be 30 facilities if it's a large chain. So in this example, we're going to renew just one license. So we're going to select no on the food service license and yes on the mobile food unit license. And that's going to start the questionnaire portion of this. And so we're going to collect some basic information that we need for this particular license type. And any location that has a red asterisk next to it is required. It will not let you proceed without including that information and filling out those fields. So as you go through, you're going to notice on the top of the screen right here, a blue bar that kind of navigates you through or shows you where you've been so far. You're going to come down to the portion where it's got the grand total. And for a mobile food unit license, it's an annual fee of $250. You can now go to checkout, or in our example here, we're going to actually choose one more license to renew. So in that highlighted bar, you will see the Department of Inspections and Appeals. Uh, underneath the tab for add another license to your cart. So now we're going to go back and renew a hotel license. You're going to have a few options here. We're trying to collect the room information that you have. Uh, so we offer two routes. You can either upload a, an Excel sheet or you can enter them manually. If you select upload, it'll take you to a download and it'll download an Excel sheet, which you can then save to your computer. So in this case, we're doing just a manual upload. And what we're going to see on the screen on the right is it'll bring a table to you where you can enter the room type, the room numbers associated with that, and then the wrap rates throughout those room types. And you can add as many records as you wish. And you can also hit the X on the left of the room type name and delete those if needed. If you were to do an upload, from the previously downloaded document, once you hit upload, you'll be presented with the same table showing the information that you uploaded. Now, since we've added two of these licenses to the cart, you'll see the grand total has gone up by the difference from the hotel license. Now, we're going to do a renewal on one of our longer uh, license types, and that is with the farmer's market. In this example, we're going to use just the business code and the license number. So the only license that is returning as eligible for renewal is the one license associated with that license number and business code. You're going to go through and you're again going to be presented with these uh, data entries. You have to fill out anything with a red asterisk on it. You can't proceed without filling that information out. You're going to come to a location that is similar to that hotel one where you can enter the locations that you're planning to vend at for the farmer's markets. You can add as many as you want, and if you add too many, you can delete some again with that X. We're going to ask for a list of your food items, and you can click Add Food Item and then enter the name of the food item. And then on the right screen, you'll see it's going to ask some basic questions. And there's more than this. This is just a quick snippet of that. You'll go through and answer yes, no. And depending on how you answer those yes, no questions, there may be some additional population boxes popping up asking for more information. Again, here is just another example of that. Uh, some of them are drop downs and depending on how you answer those drop downs, more questions may populate or more, uh, some may disappear based on how you answer as well. You're going to finally come to a review screen and you'll be able to scroll up and down and see every piece of information you have entered. You can review it all, verify it, if you need to go back and edit it, you can go back and edit. Again, this is just a small portion of what that review screen looks like, but you're able to scroll up and down and review everything at that point in time. Once you do that, you're going to come to the payment screen after you hit checkout. 
You can either pay through a bank account or using your credit card. And that kind of quickly goes through what we're able to do with the functionality of the round to GovConnect Iowa. It's extremely slick. We're super excited about it here. And uh, hopefully that kind of gives an oversight of what you can do on round two with the GovConnect Iowa. Awesome. Well, Preston, thank you. There was one uh, question that came in that, that Mark did answer through text. I want to make sure everyone sees, though. Um, they were wondering how they get their business code. And so uh, Mark had said your business code is sent to you on the renewal email and the renewal form from a licensing agency. So if you're looking for both those business codes or that license number, I'm assuming that is coming to you either in an email or physical mail. Is that, does that sound about right, Preston? That is correct. And so on that slide, we will send out email reminders 90 days prior to expiration. So you want to make sure that your email is always up to date because we're going to email whatever email address you give us. And then 45 days prior to expiration, we're going to mail out a hard copy letter with the exception of a couple of our licenses that only do emails. Uh, worst case scenario, if you cannot locate your business code, you can reach out to us at the email address right there, fcs-licensing at dia.iowa.gov, and we can provide that to you. Okay. How would um, someone that has those licenses check to see which email address they use when they set up their, their license? Is that something that's in GovConnect Iowa, or is that a different part of the DIA website? So currently they can log into the DIA's website, USA okay. Food Safety, uh, the current licensing platform that they made their username on and see that. Again, worst case scenario, if they don't remember their login, they can hit forgot password and go that route, or again, reach out to us at fcs-licensing at dia.iowa.gov. Awesome. And then for, for those that maybe missed it, where could we find a, uh, a full list of the things that are added and roll out to is that so earlier one, this slides or we're uh, yeah, sorry it wasn't list. actually presented it's every license we have available okay with the exception of hemp all right so Easy it's only to the, remember yeah yep it's only the renewable licenses so for example those familiar with the temporary food licenses those are not renewable a, those are a gotcha. per event license mm -hmm. however the annual temporary event license that one is eligible for renewal and so again, everything with the exception of hemp that is renewable is live on GovConnect Iowa now. Perfect. So just to repeat it, make sure I understand. So if it's a temporary license, like a one-time thing, you still have to use the old system. Correct. And that's not a renewal. That's just a new right. license just, at that point. Right. Every time you do it, you just are getting a new license. And if it's anything that renews, you use GovConnect Iowa. Correct. All right. Awesome. Uh, Jerrica, did you have a question? I see you raised your hand. I was going to say that we do list those on the GovConnect Iowa home screen as well. So if you actually click into the Department of Inspections and Appeal Licenses, you can um, click that link and you'll be able to view the licenses that are currently supported as well. Awesome. Well, um, Preston and Mark, thanks uh, for coming over to to share with us. We've got like maybe a minute. So if someone did have another question for um, Department of Inspections and Appeals. Please put it in now. Otherwise, uh, President, you want to stop the share. Thank you so much for that. We will have Tyler go ahead and get his uh, shared, and we'll get ready to move on to the Iowa Alcohol and Beverages Division. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Preston. All right. Up next, um, we are going to be again on the same theme of using GovConnect Iowa. We've got Tyler Ackerson here with the Alcoholic Beverages Division of the State of Iowa. I'm going to be covering all of the different ways in rollout two that you can use GovConnect Iowa um, or IABD. So Tyler, it's pretty much 1015. So go ahead and take it away when you're ready. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Patrick said, my name is Tyler Ackerson. I'm an executive officer with the Alcoholic Beverages Division. Um, and I, I'm excited to present to you today and share how we have uh, furthered our partnership with the uh, Department of Revenue and added additional features to the GovConnect Iowa system 
uh, to help our current and future retail alcohol licensees uh, make it easier for them to get their license that they need to conduct the business they want to. Uh, today, I want to share with you two major topics. Uh, the first is, you know, what has changed, uh, what's new in GovConnect Iowa with Rollout 2. Uh, and then I do want to spend some time after that talking to you about some significant law changes that were made in 2022. Uh, that affect retail alcohol licensing in the state of Iowa, and specifically how uh, those law changes affect the licenses that we have available in the GovConnect Iowa system. Uh, so beginning with what's new in GovConnect Iowa, uh, with rollout two, uh, we added two new retail alcohol license classifications to the system. Uh, the first is the special class C retail alcohol license. This license allows commercial establishments to sell wine and beer by the drink for on-premises consumption. Uh, it also allows wine and beer to be sold to go in original unopened containers. And with the law changes that I mentioned, uh, a brew pub sub permit can now be added to the special class C retail alcohol license. Uh, this sub permit allows the holder to manufacture beer. Uh, with this license type, we do have new and renewal applications available in GovConnect Iowa. Uh, and if you are a current holder of this license type, we would encourage you to use GovConnect Iowa uh, for your next renewal. The second uh, alcohol license that we've added is Class B Retail Alcohol License. This is actually a brand new license that was created uh, due to those law changes last year. Uh, it allows for the sale of beer and wine for off-premises consumption. Uh, it does not allow sales by the drink. Uh, because this is a brand new, uh, brand new license type, we only have new applications uh, currently available in GovConnect Iowa. Uh, we're hoping to add the renewal feature in the future uh, as we approach a point where we're going to have uh, renewals of this license uh, taking place. So as far as finding these licenses within the GovConnect system, uh, once you've logged into your account, uh, near the top, you will see this I want to option. If you click on that, uh, it'll take you to a new page where there are many options of things you can do. If you scroll down to about the middle of the page, you'll see this manage state of Iowa licenses option. Uh, the very top option within that box is Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division licenses. You click on that. Uh, you'll be taken to the home screen for uh, our section of GovConnect Iowa. Here on the left, you'll see this alcohol licenses box. Uh, this is where you can either apply for a new alcoholic beverage license or you can renew uh, your existing license if that is supported in the system. Uh, if you click on apply for a new, uh, you'll be taken to the welcome screen for a new alcoholic beverage license application. Uh, on the left, you'll see that we have a list of things that you will need uh, to have with you when you're filling out this application, uh, various information and uh, uploaded documents that you'll need. On the right hand side here, you'll see what license types we have available in GovConnect Iowa right now. Uh, we already had the Class C retail alcohol license and the Class E retail alcohol license. Uh, those were built in with Rollout 1. And with Rollout 2, we now have the two uh, license classifications that are in the red boxes here. So the Special Class C uh, and the Class B. Uh, you'll have to progress through the application through a couple of uh, steps where you select the location that you want to be licensed and provide some uh, business information. And then you'll have the option to uh, select what type of license you actually want to apply for. Uh, so you'll see circled in red here, uh, the two new licenses that we've added. But for all license types that are available, uh, we have a description here of, of what those licenses allow, as well as uh, the types of businesses that these licenses uh, are, are really geared towards. Also in rollout two, uh, we have added a new feature that allows you to check the status of your application once you've submitted it. Uh, so before rollout two, you could use the GovConnect Iowa system to submit your application. 
Uh, however, if you wanted to check the actual status of that application, uh, you would have to come over into our licensing system, our ELAP system, uh, or you would have to reach out to us directly here at ABD. Uh, now we have this new feature. It allows you to easily check the status uh, of your application while you're in GovConnect Iowa, so you don't have to leave that system if you have other business that you're taking care of in there. Uh, so to get to that uh, status check, again, you're logged into your account. You click on the I want to option. Scroll down to manage state of Iowa licenses. Choose the first option, which is us, Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division. Uh, back to the home screen here for our section. This time you're going to go all the way to the right and you'll see that we have this alcohol license application status uh, section. The hyperlink there in blue, you click on that. And then it'll take you to this screen where if you have submitted multiple applications, you'll be able to see uh, the status for each of those applications. Uh, for this demonstration's purposes, you know, I've submitted one application or I filled out one application in GovConnect Iowa. But as you can see, uh, the application status is still pending transmission to ABD. Uh, if you read the language uh, that we have above there, you know, you'll see that it can take up to 24 hours after you have completed your application and submitted it uh, for it to be transmitted over to our system to begin the review and approval process. So if you, if you see this status, uh, it just means that it hasn't been transferred to our system. Uh, give it 24 hours and then check back. As far as what statuses you could see, uh, really it's, it's not too different based on what license type you submit. However, there is an additional step required uh, for our on-premises licenses. So within GovConnect Iowa, that's the Class C retail alcohol license and then the special Class C. Uh, if you are planning to be an on-premises licensee, the law requires you to have uh, what's called dram shop insurance. And so uh, the first step in the review process for an application uh, that's an on-premises license is pending dram shop review. Uh, this is where your dram shop insurance carrier has to go in and verify that you do have a dram shop insurance policy and that the coverage uh, is for the entire length of the license that you're applying for. Once uh, you have that step completed, then it will move to uh, local authority review. Uh, that's when your city council, if you're within a city uh, or your county board of supervisors, if you're outside of the city, uh, they will have the opportunity to review and either approve or deny your application. If they choose to approve it, then it will be uh, submitted to ABD for our review and approval. And then once we have reviewed it and if we approve it, uh, you'll receive notification that it has been approved via email and you'll also receive your actual license via email. Uh, in terms of the off premises license, uh, they do not require dram shop. Uh, so their initial step after submission is to go right to that local authority consideration uh, and then on to ABD. So those are the two uh, major fish features uh, that we have added with rollout two. Now I wanna pivot and talk to you about uh, some of the significant law changes that occurred uh, last year that affect retail alcohol licenses. So overall, uh, what these law changes did was to reduce the number of retail license classifications that are available uh, from 14 down to eight. Uh, that was achieved through a lot of consolidation. So we had licenses that would allow you to just sell one type of uh, alcoholic beverage. Uh, there was combining of those single beverage licenses uh, into combination uh, licenses. And that's how a lot of this reduction was able to take place. Uh, in addition to reducing the number of classifications available, those classifications that were not altered, uh, they saw their base fees reduced. Uh, so licensees who hold those, and when it comes up time for renewal, they will likely see a fee reduction as a result of these law changes. Uh, Sunday sales uh, used to be uh, an additional privilege that you had to apply for, and it included an extra fee in order to be able to do that. 
uh, with these law changes, that is no longer an additional privilege. It's now just included uh, with your license and the fee is also wrapped into the base license fee. Uh, so again, if you, if you are a current licensee and you had Sunday sales, uh, you'll see that gone at your next renewal. That'll reduce your license fee. And then uh, with the base fees reducing as well for a lot of these alcohol licenses. Uh, finally, the license fee population tiers have changed. So when we calculate the fees for retail alcohol licenses, uh, it's based on three different tiers of population. Uh, so a lower uh, tier, a middle tier, and then an upper tier of population numbers. Uh, with the law changes, the lowest tier cap used to be uh, 1,500 population. So if you were a business located in a city with a 2000 population, for example, uh, you were in the middle tier. With these law changes, uh, that cap has been increased to 2500. So again, if you were that in that 2000 population city, you have now moved down to the lowest population tier uh, and you should see a fee reduction as a result of that. Uh, similarly, the highest tier floor has been increased. That was previously 10,000. Uh, so if you were in a city with, let's say, 12,000 population, uh, you were in the highest tier previously. Now that floor has been raised to 15,000. Uh, so you would move down into that middle tier uh, as far as population, and that should reduce your fee as well. So this is uh, an overview of all the, the law changes that happened. Now I'd like to talk about uh, the specific law changes for the license types that we have available in the GovConnect Iowa system. Starting with uh, the Class E retail alcohol license, one of the major changes to this license was that uh, holders no longer need to get uh, additional sub permits to sell beer and wine to go. Uh, so in the past, if you wanted to sell beer to go, you had to get a separate beer permit. Uh, and if you wanted to sell wine to go, you had to get a separate wine permit. With the law changes, those sub permits are no longer necessary. Uh, the Class E license now allows you to sell liquor, wine, and beer to go with just the Class E license. So that should result in a, a fee reduction for holders of this type of license. Uh, additionally, Gasoline sales are no longer a factor for the license fee. So for the Class E license, uh, its fee used to be calculated based on uh, population, square footage, and whether you sold gasoline or not. Uh, now that gasoline criteria has been removed. So for our licensees who uh, are convenience stores or other types of businesses that uh, sell gasoline, that will no longer be a factor in calculating your fee and will likely result in a fee reduction uh, through that. Finally, a big change for the Class E license is that it is now eligible for automatic renewal. And so what that means is that uh, you as a holder of this license type can uh, apply to participate in the automatic renewal program, meaning that once you are enrolled in the program, each year moving forward, your license would automatically renew, uh, provided you have paid the license fee and there has not been a disqualifying event that's taken place during your license term that would remove you from the program. Uh, for example, some kind of administrative action being taken against your license, uh, or your local authority has determined that uh, further review of your license is needed, and so you've been removed from the program. Unfortunately, uh, these law changes took place uh, in 2022 at a time when we were mid-development of Rollout 2, and so we were not able to get the automatic renewal program built into GovConnect Iowa. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll be able to do that in a future rollout, uh, but for the time being, if you are a Class E license holder and this is interesting to you, uh, please reach out to us directly at ABD and we can assist you in getting in that program. Uh, the Class C retail alcohol license, uh, this is a, a long-standing license that bars and restaurants get. Uh, it did not see very many changes with the law changes. Uh, this particular license does have varying durations available for it, so it is not just an annual license. Uh, 
but one of those durations was removed with the law changes. That's the six month duration. Uh, so the remaining available durations for this license are 12 month, eight month, 14 day, and five day. Uh, this was one of the licenses that has base fee reduced. And as I mentioned earlier, Sunday sales has now been wrapped into the base fee. So uh, holders of this license will see uh, a fee reduction the next time they go to renew their license. Uh, now talking about the licenses that we have available uh, in rollout two now in the GovConnect Iowa system. So the class B retail alcohol license. Uh, like I said, this is a newly created license with the law changes last year. It allows for the sale of beer and wine to go. Previously, if you wanted to uh, have the ability to sell beer and wine to go and not liquor, uh, you had to get two separate permits. Now you just need to get one license, a class B retail alcohol license. Its fee is based on population and square footage. And because it's a brand new license, uh, we have only built in the ability to apply for new applications within GovConnect Iowa. Uh, as we move forward, we will be exploring building in that uh, renewal feature in future rollouts. Finally, the special class C retail alcohol license. Uh, again, this was a, a license that had already existed, but saw some changes uh, due to the law changes. First of all, a brew pub sub permit can now be added. Again, this is a sub permit that allows for the manufacture of beer. Uh, so if you were previously a, a holder of this license and you are interested in, in manufacturing beer, that is now an option for you. Uh, like the Class C license, uh, this license is available in several different durations. Uh, however, the six month duration was eliminated. So like the class C, this comes in the 12 month, eight month, 14 day and five day durations based on uh, how long you need that license. The base fee for this license was reduced and the Sunday sales uh, privilege was wrapped in. Uh, so again, current holders of this license will see a fee reduction the next time they renew. And because this was an existing license, uh, we did build in the ability to apply for new and renewal applications uh, through GovConnect. And again, if you are a current holder of this license, we would encourage you to use uh, the GovConnect Iowa system uh, to renew your license. I do want to spend uh, some time answering some questions, uh, but first I want to provide you with contact information uh, for the various questions you might have after this webinar and making sure that we get you to uh, the right place to answer your question. So if you have general licensing or application questions, for example, you're going through uh, your application in GovConnect Iowa, you're not quite sure what we're asking for on a section of the application, uh, please reach out to our licensing department. Uh, the email for them is licensing at iowaabd.com. Uh, if you're an existing business, you have questions about the new law changes and how those affect your uh, license, you can reach out to me directly. Again, my name is Tyler Ackerson. My email address is ackerson at iowaabd.com. Uh, if you're in GovConnect Iowa and you have system issues, uh, you're going through an application, you get a big red box that says system error, uh, that needs to be directed to the Department of Revenue for assistance. Uh, and you can reach them via email at idr at iowa.gov. Uh, finally, uh, for ABD's website here, uh, our website is abd.iowa.gov. We have a lot of great information on our website uh, from license fee tables to information about what you need when you're applying for an alcohol license. We have a lot of great educational information on our website that can help you uh, stay compliant once you are a licensee. And we do have seller and server trainings available on our website for you and your employees. Uh, so a lot of great information there. And then lastly, we have the GovConnect Iowa website here. Uh, so this is where you go to actually access the GovConnect Iowa system. But they also have a lot of great information there about how to use the system uh, and, and the features that are available within the system. So with that, uh, I'd be happy to open up to any questions. 
Awesome, Tyler. Great, uh, great job. We do have one uh, question from Marie that just came in uh, for the addition of wine into the class B retail license. Does the wine need to be native wine or does this open it up to out of state wine? Yeah, good question. So with the class B uh, retail alcohol license, this allows the holder to sell any type of beer and any type of wine. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if the, uh, the person asking is a native winery. Uh, if you are a native winery, uh, you're not eligible for this particular uh, license classification. Uh, but there are other options available uh, for you that will allow you to sell uh, wine uh, to go and buy the drink uh, of any kind, not just native wine. And I'm happy to work with you on uh, getting you set up with that. Uh, awesome. Another question you mentioned here on some of the license status checks that you can see now um, in GovConnect Iowa. Do the do the local authorities interact with GovConnect Iowa, or is that still separate from the system? Uh, not at this time. That is still separate from the system. So local authorities, when they do their review and approval of the application, they are doing that in our licensing system. Okay. Uh, so this, this status check is uh, just for the convenience of the applicant themselves. Gotcha. So no one else has to get access to GovConnect Iowa, and it's all updated by Alcoholic Beverages Division in GovConnect Iowa to make sure the license statuses are up to date. So, yes, correct. The, uh, the, the two systems talk to each other. And sure. so as your uh, license uh, application is progressing through our system, uh, the GovConnect Iowa system is talking to our system and, and figuring out what the current status of your application is. Excellent. Uh, Jerrica, go ahead. Tyler, a common question that we get at the Department of Revenue is when an ABD applicant is renewing their license, where do they obtain that security code? Where, or if they need help getting a security code, who would they contact? Yep, so the security code uh, should be provided with your uh, renewal notification email. Uh, if for whatever reason you didn't receive that email, um, we, are, we do have the ability uh, for our staff to look up what your code is. And so if you didn't get your email for whatever reason and you need that code, uh, just reach out to us and we can provide that for you. Awesome. Well, uh, if we don't have any other questions. Um, we can um, kind of move on. Tyler, thank you again um, for sharing with us. Um, once more, for those of you that maybe joined later missed it. This has been recorded and the slides are available um, on iowasourcelink.com too. So you can always go back and watch um, if you have questions about the alcoholic beverages division. So Heather, uh, once again, thank you. Thank you. All right. So Mary, why don't you go ahead and get your uh, slide deck up and, up and shared. So we are about, we're in theory, halfway through. So if you just joined us uh, before this, um, before we go to the Iowa Lottery Authority, we did have the Department of Inspections and Appeals, and they overviewed farmers markets, mobile food units, and hotel licensing. Um, that was the first 15 minutes. You can find that recording will be available afterwards. You get the presentation from the website. We just uh, finished with the Iowa Alcoholic Beverage Division, um, and they looked at the legislative changes for retail licenses and those new license types. Um, that are available in GovConnect Iowa and roll out two. Um, so be sure to, if you're just joining us, you can go check those out. Um, we will post in the chat the slides for um, the Iowa Lottery Authority. Um, and with that, hopefully we're, I know we're like five minutes ahead of schedule, but Mary, I think let's just, let's just go ahead and enroll with it. That sound good? That sounds great. No, no filling of time this morning, right? No fill, yeah, I, I didn't bring my dancing shoes, so we, we don't have to do that. So up next, uh, we've got Mary Neubauer, who's the Vice President of External Relations with the Iowa Lottery, um, looking at the electronic licensing in GovConnect Iowa. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, as, as some folks have already referenced, there was an initial rollout of GovConnect Iowa, and now there has been the rollout, too, of the process. 
And just to provide background for you, all retailer licensing um, at the Iowa Lottery went electronic with the initial rollout of GovConnect Iowa. And then with this phase two of the process, um, we've gone back and, and made some tweaks to the process that we hope will make the licensing procedures a little more clear and, and user-friendly to just help people get through them. But again, just keep in mind that all retailer licensing at the Iowa Lottery is now electronic through GovConnect Iowa. And also there is just one main retailer license that businesses receive from the Iowa Lottery. It's for the sale of all lottery products in Iowa. So lotto games, meaning games like Powerball and Mega Millions, Instant Scratch games, Insta Play games, and Pull Tab games are all sold under our retailer license. We don't have separate licenses or individual permits for our different products. And the GovConnect Iowa process is really designed to provide a linear path that ensures a business has completed one necessary step, step like providing tax information before it can go on to the next. So you've already seen um, the homepage for GovConnect Iowa in, in a couple of, of the different presentations today, but I'm going to return to it here because this is where an applicant starts the process for an Iowa lottery license. Now, some businesses have easily made it through the electronic licensing application for a lottery license with little or no assistance. Others have had some snags along the way. And I think there will always be differing levels of comfort, no matter what the technology is that's involved. But I hope that providing these tips here today and continuing to work with you on the process um, as we continue to improve, um, we can help with that. So you'll get started here by following the prompts highlighted to log in. If you have an existing GovConnect Iowa account or create a log on to create a brand new account. There are two spots where you can do that uh, by using the registration tile that you can see there on the screen or the login box uh, at the top of the page. If you have difficulty with these initial steps, just as some other folks have referenced, your question, questions at this point will go to the help desk at the Iowa Department of Revenue because that is the department um, that has information to help with the GovConnect Iowa system. So after you have created your logon, your business will have a GovConnect Iowa profile, but that profile won't yet be linked to any additional details. And that will be the case for a brand new business or a long-term existing business. And in either case, you'll need to link the business profile for your location to its sales tax permits with the Iowa Department of Revenue. So remember this tip for this particular screen, a business that hasn't yet um, connected that link or completed that link uh, by accessing its tax information will not be able to proceed. Some businesses have tried to apply for a lottery license directly from this screen before they linked up their tax information and they couldn't move ahead with the process. So there are two options for creating the profile link and I've highlighted them in green. A business that has never filed with the Iowa Department of Revenue before will click the register a new business link in the registration tile. A business that has already filed with revenue will go to the access tile and choose the link there that applies to its particular location, either request access to an account or enter an access code um, to connect to an account. Entry of a security code is required in the process, and when a business requests a code, the Iowa Department of Revenue will mail a letter with the code the next day to the business address on file. The applicant will wait for the letter, then enter the code by using um, the link that, again, that's called enter an access code to connect to an account. Existing businesses may already have received their access codes and a welcome letter from the Iowa Department of Revenue. If they already have their code, they can go ahead and enter it right away. Otherwise, um, the business will need to use the link to request an access to an account and wait to receive the letter containing the required security code. That's just an important timing mechanism because it may take you just a little while to receive that code. Um, but once you have linked your business's um, GovConnect Iowa profile to its sales tax information, you'll see this summary page on the portal that displays the details for your business. And to proceed to the spot where you'll apply for a lottery license, you'll click the I want to button at the top of the page that, um, that's highlighted there. 
That takes you to a screen providing various options within the GovConnect Iowa site. You'll select the link for Iowa Lottery Authority licenses in the tile that's called Manage State of Iowa Licenses. I'll also point out that in this image, the tile involved is in the lower part of the screen, but it may be in another location on the screen for you, depending on the device that you're using. You'll then go on to this main page for Iowa Lottery Licenses. And as you can see, there are two options listed. The Lottery Licenses tile allows you to begin a new license application. And the Drafts and Submissions tile allows you to search for previous documents, including applications and renewals. You'll select the option that applies in your situation. And then um, once you have chosen the option, you'll go to the what you will need, need page that's shown here. And just like the page says, it provides a checklist of the details you'll need to complete the lottery license applications. If you have the documentation all gathered up and ready, you should be able to proceed smoothly with the process. So I would say pause for a moment there, make sure you have all those details together, and then click the next button to keep going. You'll then proceed to this page, which will be pre-populated with details from your business's GovConnect Iowa profile. In the example shown here, the business involved has only one location, but corporate retailers with multiple locations will have a screen showing all of those locations. To apply for a lottery license for a particular business location, click the radio button for it under the location's newly registered heading. You'll then need to verify um, that, de that the details for that particular location are accurate. Next, you'll advance to the owner's page shown here where you'll add the information for anyone with 10% or greater ownership of the business involved. Please note that the ownership information you enter here, enter here has to total 100% ownership for the business. Any amount other than 100% will cause an error. Next up is the security page. And a really important note here is that if you answer yes to any of the three questions in the answer security questions section, the lottery license application will be terminated for the obvious reasons highlighted in the questions. The application will not advance further. But when you've successfully completed the security page, you'll advance to the store information page. And as you complete the fields here, you'll need to know whether the mailing address for the business is the same as its physical location. And if the mailing address is different, you'll need to add that in. In addition, please, as some other folks had noted earlier, keep track of the email address you provide in the license representative section. A confirmation email will be sent to that address verifying that the person has submitted an application to the Iowa Lottery. So you will need a record of that. You'll then advance to the business history page shown here, and you'll need to answer all of the three questions on this page, or again, an error will be caused. Next up is the bank information page, and the details being asked for here are for the financial account that will handle the business's ongoing transactions with the Iowa Lottery. You'll also need to attach a voided check, a financial institution later, or a deposit slip as documentation for the account. You'll then go to the page, and I apologize, the, the speaker's box over there is covering up part of it, but you'll go to the page where you can pay the $25 fee required for an Iowa Lottery license application. Now there is a time limit involved um, to pay that fee. And if that isn't completed by the time noted on the screen, and here you can see that it was 11.59 11, PM, your application will be saved as a draft and you can come back to it later. You also have two options for paying the fee. If you click the checkout box, you can proceed with just paying the $25 fee for an Iowa lottery application. But if you check, check the box for add um, another license to my cart, you can complete other processes within GovConnect Iowa before making the required payment. For example, if you choose to pay for multiple state licenses and permits at one time, which I can see a lot of businesses might want to do, you can make one payment for all of them with the fees allocated out to the separate state entities involved. 
This is the payment page where you will pay the application fee to the Iowa Lottery. You have two, two options to do that, pay with a bank account or with a credit card. Please note that it is legal for it is legal for the $25 lottery license application fee to be paid with a credit card. It is illegal in Iowa for lottery products to be purchased with credit, but the payment of this application fee is not a transaction that involves the purchase of lottery tickets. If you choose the credit card option, a 2.5% credit card processing fee will be assessed on the transaction. So the total that you pay would be a little bit more than $25. If you choose the, to pay with a bank account, it does not have to be the same one that you identified earlier for use in ongoing business transactions with the lottery. And once you've made your payment, you can print a record of that or just exit the page. This screen shows um, the text of an automated email that is sent to the business that submits an application for a lottery license and pays the $25 application fee. I've highlighted the click here link because it will securely take you from the GovConnect Iowa portal to the Iowa Lottery's retail platform to complete the lottery license application. And I know that earlier uh, the Department of Inspections and Appeals noted that you also have to transition from one, um, one system to another in its, in its process. In this case, it, it's a really seamless handoff. You just, you just follow that click here link. Um, if a business has submitted a license application through GovConnect Iowa, but hasn't yet completed the additional steps on the lottery's retail or platform, the lottery system will send you weekly reminder emails to complete the process. A business has 60 days to complete its application to the lottery for a retailer license. And if it does not complete the process within that time frame, it will have to start a new application. We thought 60 days was a pretty good period of time to give people uh, enough time to get that done. Um, you will now be, once you follow that, click here link, you will now be on the lottery's retail platform. And the homepage for it is shown here with some overlays just to illustrate the process. Think of the lottery side of the application process as building out the basics from GovConnect Iowa to add in details that are specific to the lottery. You'll need to sign in here to continue with your lottery application. The email field shown on the lottery platform is highlighted in yellow because it will be pre-populated with your business address from GovConnect Iowa. You'll need to use the forgot your password link um, that's highlighted in red to set up a password on the lottery platform. You can choose your same password from GovConnect Iowa or you can use a different pa password. It is up to you. There are more steps to gather information on the lottery retail platform, but in the interest of time here today, I'll fast forward to show you the successful end screen of an application for an Iowa lottery license. When you've successfully completed the process, all the requested forms that are along the right side there will be marked in green with check marks. The big ribbon, the green ribbon at the top of the page verifies a successful submission as you can see there and the application itself is marked in green as in approval process you'll want to see lots of green on the screen on this final page of the lottery application because it demonstrates that you have been successful in the process once your lottery application has been filed the iowa lottery then runs a financial check based upon the details you provided for your business and the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation also does a background check for those listed as owners. The time involved for those steps is contingent upon the details found during the checks themselves, but in general, those steps have been, completed, have been completed within about two weeks. So again, just as others have said, thank you so much for letting me share these highlights here today to help you complete the lottery's um, electronic license application. Here's the slide I promised earlier where you can grab a screenshot of the lottery's contact information. You can reach our licensing specialists um, at the email address of licensing at ialottery.com. The telephone numbers for our offices around the state are listed here, and so is the lottery website. And don't forget the help section on the GovConnect Iowa portal itself. 
We plan to continue to gather information from the businesses using our electronic licensing process and utilize their perspective and suggestions to make improvements as we move ahead, just as happened from phase one to phase two. We have been really gratified um, to have worked with the other state partners on this GovConnect Iowa project for the ultimate benefit of the citizens of Iowa. And I would be happy to take questions if there are any. Thanks, Patrick. Mary, great, uh, great job as always. A um, couple of questions that, that I had that popped up as you're going through. If you're doing multiple locations, can you do that in GovConnect Iowa? Do you, can you add multiple to say, I, if I was lucky enough to have multiple stores to sell lottery products, can I do all of them in the same screen or do I have to do them separately? No, I, I, it's my understanding that you can do them all in one screen. Um, okay. There was that one screen that I had earlier with the yep. radio and there, there would be there would be multiple locations listed there. You would probably need to add the details for each location mm -hmm. um, at a time. But yes, they if you're um, if you're a chain retailer, for example, and you have multiple locations, they they would all be listed there. Generally, chain locations, however, open locations one at a time. So you know they might open this store, and you would fill out the the details there. But there are businesses that come in and and license all of their locations at once, and, and they would be able to walk through that process. And for the ones that um, I figure adding, say a new location, it's the same process, even if you already have um, an account on the lottery licensing webpage, it's the same process that you'd go through? Yeah, that that is a really good point. And yes, it is because every location does have to be licensed. Um, you know, if, if you take like company A and company A has 50 stores, company A does have to have a license for each of its locations. It can't just get one big license for um, for the entire chain, if that makes sense. That does make sense. Now, in, in that case, is it $25 per location or just $25 for the app? Like it, it is dollars per location. Okay. Um, I, I will say that that is a one-time fee. It's not an yeah. annual fee. It's not something that's renewed. It is just a one-time fee. So hopefully that makes it uh, an affordable option. Absolutely. And then as you're saying, no, re no renewal fee. So these licenses then, once you complete the process for being a lottery retailer, uh, do those have to be renewed every 12 months or are they kind of in perpetuity until you end the relationship? Yeah, they, they are in perpetuity. We do have um, security folks who go out and inspect um, our locations. Um, we get to at least 20 locations per 20 percent of locations per year in the state um, so that all locations would be inspected at least once every five years. Um, but no, there there is not a renewal of that license. Uh, assuming that the store remains in good standing, it would be able to keep that same license in, as it moves ahead. If a location is sold or changes ownership, it would need to get a, a new license from the Iowa Lottery because obviously all of the details would have changed. But assuming that that business um, remains under the same ownership, um, it would be able to keep the same license. Awesome. Last question then. As you complete the process and get that license, um, is any of that information reflected in GovConnect Iowa? Would you be able to like see the status um, of anything for your lottery licenses in GovConnect Iowa, even just like that it was complete? Or is you that... I am I am not the one who does licensing every day at the <laughs> Iowa Lottery, that, but that is sure. a really... That is a really good question. I know it is reflected on the lottery side because you have transitioned from GovConnect Iowa to the lottery side. Right. Um, but I I will need to check that and get back to you. And well, maybe Erica, who's on the on the on the screen, knows more about it than I do. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Thanks for asking, Patrick. So how it, how it works for a lottery is that um, GovConnect Iowa is used, um, think of it as like the intake portal. So it's where they're intaking their information, intaking that initial licensing process and to check the status and, and to do everything else at that point, that's where you would use the lottery licensing portal or process. Teamwork, thank you, Jerrica. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Well, Mary, thank you again um, for the information on the Iowa Lottery's electronic licenses. Appreciate you uh, being on here and we'll hopefully connect again sometime soon. Maybe when I win the Powerball, I'll give you a call. Okay. It could happen. All right, mm -hmm. thanks everybody. Yeah. Have a good morning. All right, um, so that wraps up our third uh, agency for the morning.
So we will now transition over to the Iowa Department of Revenue. Um, so uh, Jericho, whenever you're ready, go ahead and get your um, screen shared, whichever um, slides and things you want to put up. Once more, for anyone that is just joining us, as I've seen a few other people jump in, um, we're going to be recorded. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box and we will answer them um, either when we get time or at the end of the presentation. And we'll also make sure the slides are available to you. Um, so if you will be posting the direct link to the uh, Department of Revenue slides um, right there, I think, is that what I see? Yep. So that I was that first Iowa Source link link should download the PDF version of these slides uh, right for you. And you can follow along um, as Jerica goes through. Um, and then in the background to help Jerica, we also have Tara West from the Department of Revenue. So if you do have questions, um, Tara may be able to answer them via the chat answers um, in the Q&A. So uh, Jerica, good to see you. Um, thanks for hanging out for the first hour. Um, the next hour is all yours. So when you're ready, go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks, Patrick, appreciate that. Um, so we have an exciting portion um, to talk about um, in terms of GovConnect Iowa. Um, obviously, I'm a what you'd call a GovConnect Iowa nerd. I'm excited to talk with you about it. Um, so I just want to say welcome to the Iowa Department of Revenue's um, portion of today's webinar series. Um, so my name is Jerrica Pellington, and I work on the GovConnect Iowa team. And today, we'll be covering the access types available in GovConnect Iowa. And then I'll also be going through an overview of other party access and third party authorization. So like Patrick said in our chat today, you will see Tara West. Um, if we do not answer your questions during the webinar, um, we do re receive and then review your questions afterward. Um, and we will either update our website, GovConnect Iowa, or the common questions that we have as answers are available. So the first thing we always have to do, if you've ever been to one of our webinars, is we do have to give you our disclaimer. So I will say that just note that this presentation is for general educational purposes only, and it should be not be construed in any way as legal advice. Um, the department could take a contrary position for this in the future, so just be aware of that. What we say here today is not binding on the department unless you wish to obtain a declaratory order. And any data that's used in today's examples are fictional and do not include actual taxpayer data. So now that that's out of the way, um, we'll go ahead and cover our agenda. So today we'll talk about the access types available in GovConnect Iowa. We will review the steps in creating a logon and requesting access to tax accounts. Then we'll shift gears to talk about other party access and focus on third party authorization. We will have breaks throughout the webinar to take a look at the Q&As and answer them as we go through. Um, so if you have questions, go ahead and put them in that Q&A box and then we will be able to answer them as we go. So we'll start by discussing requesting access to tax accounts in GovConnect Iowa. So in GovConnect Iowa, you can request access and select one of the five options that you can see below. So the five options are the, are the smaller bullet points underneath business access and other party access. So let's dive into what these truly mean. So with business access, there are three available options for users to choose from. So full access is the first and most powerful option that's available. This will ultimately give you full and unlimited access to the tax accounts in GovConnect Iowa. This option would ideally be chosen by owners or senior staff at a company. It is important to note that full access can only be removed by Iowa Department of Revenue staff or the GovConnect Iowa user themselves. So if you or someone on your team has any uncertainty with the longevity of access, just keep that in mind and just know that we do have other pathways that may work for you as well, which I'll cover here soon. Um, the full access pathway does have other benefits to consider. So this access type would allow you to grant, manage, and revoke online access to all other users that are associated with that tax account. Another advantage is that if new tax accounts are added, say by another user or through a paper business registration form, um, immediate access is granted. 
And if there are any other access types um, out there that are associated to the business, they do have to request access and then receive that physical access code letter, which is sent to the taxpayer's headquarters address. So just keep those in mind. The next option that you have is administrator. So full access and administrator are very similar in terms of accessing and managing the tax accounts. Where the true difference lies is in managing access of other GovConnect Iowa users and the ability for a full access user to manage administrators. So some perks of selecting administrator include managing the tax accounts, being able to add additional logons, which I'll talk about soon, and then managing other party users access. And then another perk is that you can request password resets for the additional logons that you created. And the third pathway is account managers. So account managers have the most limited access on GovConnect Iowa. However, this means that they can still manage the tax accounts, meaning they can make payments, file returns, they can update other um, portions of tax accounts. Um, however, they do not have the ability to manage other users. So if you are an employee of a business and you're working with GovConnect Iowa or through GovConnect Iowa, we do recommend that you select administrator or account manager access. So with other party access, there are two options available. Other party access is intended for third party professionals that manage their clients' tax accounts via GovConnect Iowa. Other party administrator and other party account manager are the two types, and these follow similar rules to business access. However, they cannot manage other users um, or GovConnect Iowa users that have selected business access. They will both receive access to the Accountant Center, and the Accountant Center is a center that's dedicated to tax professionals that manage several clients. So from that center, you'd be able to view payments, returns, uh, manage secondary logons, and you have more options um, just from one central location. So let's talk about secondary logons and additional logons and what those really are. So other party users can add what's called a secondary logon. And so think of it as a parent and child relationship. Once a tax professional gains access to their client's accounts, they can create what we're calling a secondary logon. And these are basically an extension of the person's account that's creating that secondary logon. So this means that the parent account is ultimately, ultimately responsible for managing their employee's security levels and their access to accounts. So this also means that access must be requested and granted by the parent logon. Um, so this, this is done for a couple of reasons. Um, this would allow for ease of staff transitioning um, in case a staff member leaves. So the person that would be in a parent logon role may be a supervisor or a manager of a unit, whereas a secondary logon would be the employee. So think of it as a hierarchy. Um, it is important to note that they are dependent on each other. So that means that when the parent logon is deleted, the secondary logon is also deleted, which would revoke their access entirely. The other portion has to do with additional logons. So business access users with full access or administrator level access can create what we call additional logons. So this is the business user either setting up a brand new GovConnect Iowa logon for someone else, or it's a way of them granting immediate access to another GovConnect Iowa user. Um, so in order for the business user to grant immediate access, they will need the other GovConnect Iowa users information. So think of their username and their email address. Additional logons have the same account type levels as requesting access, which is what we're talking about here, but it also includes some additional types. And one of these is the license manager. License managers are designed to manage only the licensing aspects of GovConnect Iowa, which involves the um, presentations that you had heard earlier today. So for example, if your employee or your third party is only meant to apply or renew licenses with ABD, DIA, or Iowa Lottery, this would be the most appropriate access level type for them. 
So what we're going to do now is I'm going to walk through the screens that are available for create a logon and requesting access. So if you have any questions specifically for those processes, um, I would say go ahead and put those in the Q&A and then we'll answer them um, once I'm done showing those screens. So the first step when you create a new logon, um, you will see this screen. So this is similar to what you had seen on the other licensing applications. Um, we want to tell you up front what to expect. So this will tell you some of the features that are available, as well as the supported tax and license types. The second step is for you to enter your logon information. So make sure that you're entering a valid email address as that will be used on the following screen for email verification purposes. You will see that the username and password requirements are available right on the screen to make it easier for you to identify and then meet those requirements. Um, say, for example, that the username is already taken, you will be notified on this screen before you're allowed to move forward. Another question that we get is, um, why do I see asterisks um, on the password and secret answered fields? The reason for that is, is that once they match, uh, we do have a security process in place that we mask those, so that way they're no longer visible. Once you have entered your logon information, you will move on to the email validation step. So an email will be sent to the email address provided in the prior step with a validation code. You would then get that validation code, which is six digits, and you'd be able to enter the code on this screen and then click next to continue. The next step is to answer if you are a bulk filer. So you must register to be a bulk filer. So if you are questioning if you should answer yes to this or if you fit that criteria, um, we have included helpful information right on the screen to help you with that. Um, I will repeat that it does require a formal registration process as it requires specific testing and does require manual approval by the department. So. I, you know, if you think that you are a bulk filer, I would ask the question, you know, you can contact taxpayer services, you can look on our website, we do have quite a bit of information available. If you are a tax professional that's filing one return at a time, or if you only plan to renew alcohol or food service licenses, um, you are likely not a bulk filer and you could select no and just move forward from this. The next step in the process is to decide if you need to request access to an account. So if you are planning to renew licenses only or you need to register a new business, you would be able to just select no here and click next. That would then finalize the create a logon process and you'd be able to log in. However, if you have filed a return previously or you know that you're registered with the Department of Revenue, you can request access to your account right now. So what you would do is you would select yes here. And I will tell you that this process is extremely similar to requesting access while actually logged into GovConnect Iowa. So I'm just going to walk through those screens now. I will tell you that we are working on updating this verbiage on the screen to make sure that we're including every area. So if you're applying for tax credits or a tax credit transfer, um, you can select no here as well, and you could click next and then go ahead and act on your tax credits. So the first step when you're requesting access is to select your access type. So in this scenario, I will assume that I am a business owner that's wanting to file my own tax returns and I will click next. So in this case, I would select business access and click next. And then the next step is to select the right access level, which is what we talked about earlier. Since I am the business owner, I would select full access and I'd be able to click next to continue. Once the access type and the level have been selected, you must then select an account type associated with your business or entity. So you can think of this as a shared secret. This information you are validating should only be known between the department and an authorized individual. We do recommend that you do not share this information with anyone outside of your organization or your tax professional. So in this scenario, um, I'm going to select corporation and then I'll click next. 
So the next step is to enter the verification information. Once you have entered in the FEIN or permit number for permit related tax types, you can then enter a piece of verification information and click next to continue. If the information matches our records, you may proceed to the next step. So what happens after you verify the tax account information? The first thing is that you're going to see a review screen and you will see a zip code associated with the headquarters or primary mailing address. If that doesn't match where you expect the letter to go, that would mean that it's a great time to pause and have an authorized individual contact the department to verify that the headquarters address is correct. Once you've done that, a letter with an access code will be mailed to the taxpayer's headquarters or primary mailing address. So after you've created your logon, you can then um, log in. You'd be able to register a new business. You could request access to additional accounts. You could renew your licenses and you can make quick payments while you wait for that access code letter. Once you receive that access code letter, you can then return to GovConnect Iowa enter the access code, and then you would receive online access to those tax accounts. Now, one of the common questions that we get is that, hey, I need to make a payment today and I don't have access, what do I do? So one of the great perks is that if you need to pay before you receive that access code, you can. Um, so we have that solution built. So what you would see is um, if you are not logged into GovConnect Iowa, you can use that quick pay feature that's available on the home screen. And then if you log into GovConnect Iowa and you're not connected to any customers or accounts yet, you can also quick pay from that home screen as well. So there are a couple different options out there. So we have covered quite a bit of information at this point. So I'll go ahead and share where to find this information along with the most common question that my team receives. Um, so to view the common questions we have answered, you could head out to our website, which is tax.iowa.gov, and you could go to the Need Help tab. On that drop down menu, if you click common questions, you'll be able to see a table that's built that allows you to filter based on the topic you're looking for. So GovConnect Iowa does have its own filter, which is awesome. You can go ahead and dial it down and then it does have a search option so you can search within those filters. The most common question that I get is what if I haven't received my access code letter? So the answer that, that I would provide is that it may take up to two weeks to receive it by mail. However, if you requested that access code and you haven't received it yet, I'd say within two weeks, I recommend that you contact our taxpayer services team or that you reach out to um, the headquarters address and, and verify that if they have received it. Um, sometimes um, there may be a gap in actually providing that access code letter to you since it is going physically to the taxpayer. Um, what you'll wanna do um, is if you don't receive it and you do contact taxpayer services, is just give us a call and make sure that the contact information on file for your tax account is correct. Um, and then just a reminder that you can still use quick pay while you wait for it. So I'm gonna take a quick pause here, um, get a drink of water, super, super important for me to stay hydrated, right? Um, so I will go ahead and take a pause here and see if there are any questions in the Q&A. We do have a few coming in on the Q&A. Um, is there any way you can get instant access and don't have to wait two weeks to get snail mail? That is a great question. So if your client has access, um, they would be able to grant you immediate access. That's one option that you have. Um, and they would be able to grant it to you there. Now, if your client does not have a GovConnect Iowa logon, which they're not required to in order for you to gain access, you would have to wait for that actual letter. Uh, what if I've attempted to request, I think you talked about this a little bit, the key code and get no response when we're trying to contact? What's the best way to, to make sure we're getting those access codes? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. So I think the key code may, may be in regards to that verification step. Um, there, there may be some times where it may go to your junk folder or it may go to a spam folder. Those are the most common scenarios that we see. Um, but I would 
try a different email address or try the phone number option if you can. And then once you have one of those set up, when you get logged into GovConnect Iowa, you can actually go in and add a second one or you can update it. Um, I know that we're, we do see those happen on the back end. Um, so we can see those as well. And then it looks like there's a another question. Can you clarify the best email and phone number? Um, yeah, so we will. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think Tara's typing in there, but yeah, I think you also will have the contact slide um, coming up at the end, I believe. So yeah, you got it. Thank you. We're on it. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I will go ahead and move on to the next portion here. And like I said, if we didn't get to your question um, or Tara um, is unable to answer it in the chat right away, we will um, review those and then respond accordingly. So let's go ahead and talk about the overview of other party access and third party authorization. Um, some of these forms are newer and our goal today um, is to provide clarity on which forms um, may work best for your situation along with some processing tips that will help you through the process. So we will start by defining what an other party is versus a third party. So an other party is used in connection with GovConnect Iowa. So this means if you have other party access, you have online access to the tax accounts on GovConnect Iowa. The other party access option is intended for third party professionals. So think tax preparers, accountants, or third parties. And then a third party is an authorized individual slash person other than the taxpayer themselves. So examples for an individual taxpayer include a spouse, family member, court ordered guardian, accountant, attorney, um, those would all fall into third parties. Um, examples of an entity taxpayer include either an officer or an employee that could be a third party. Um, I will say, this is a fun did you know, but online access does not include or equal third party authorization. And it's very important that we make that distinction up front. So if you have access to the tax accounts on GovConnect Iowa, and then say that you have a question about the tax account or you have a question about um, a, an application or form that you had submitted and you contact the department, we may require a third party form in order to assist you based on what you've provided previously. So just keep that in mind as you contact the department. We have six forms that we'll be covering today. All of this information is available on our website, which I'll provide that pathway toward the end of the registration. Um, but the first form that we're going to talk about today is the public record request. So if you are seeking information that you believe to be public in nature, you can submit the paper form or the request available is available through GovConnect Iowa. The second form is the Iowa 8979 pass-through representative appointment form. So if you are a pass-through entity and need to change or provide your representative information, you may do so through this form. And the third form is the Iowa 4506 um, request for copy of tax return. If you do need a copy of your state tax return, this would be the form you could use to request a copy. And the next forms that we're talking about have to do specifically with third party authorization. Um, so let's go and we'll go into deeper detail on each of these forms um, after these slides. So the fourth form um, is the Iowa 2848 um, power of attorney form. So if you want to grant authority to someone else, typically a representative, third party, or a tax professional um, to both obtain confidential information and make decisions on your behalf, this is the form for you. The fifth form is the representative certification form. So if you have authority granted elsewhere, this may be the best option for you. We do have quite a bit of information on our website about this form as well. Um, so I will go ahead and show you where to find that as well. And the sixth form is the Iowa 8821 tax information disclosure designation form. If you want to grant permission to an individual to obtain confidential information but not act on your behalf, this would be the right form to complete. 
So let's start with the Iowa 8821 form. So if you'd like for someone to be able to discuss your confidential tax information with the department, this would be the form to complete. Um, the primary use of this form that we've seen is that it's for anyone that you want to discuss information with us. Um, some examples that we've seen include the ombudsman, um, legislators, or if you have administrative staff that are seeking a status update on the tax account. And ways to complete this form, you can complete it through GovConnect Iowa, or you could submit a paper form. Um, you can also revoke this form at any time the same way. So then we'll go ahead and talk about the power of attorney form. So what exactly is a power of attorney? Um, otherwise referred to as a POA. So a power of attorney is a legal document that allows someone else to act on your behalf. So power of attorneys can be helpful to many people and others who want to choose a trusted person to act when they cannot. So essentially this person has the same authority as you to make decisions, handle your tax affairs and manage your tax accounts. Uh, one thing that we have noticed is that um, it, if you are expecting that more than three representatives are to be included as POAs, we have created what's called the 2848A form, and so that has to be completed and attached with the Iowa 2848. Um, the 2848A should only be used to appoint additional power of attorneys that weren't originally noted on that Iowa 2848. And then another common question that we get is what happens if I don't list a limitation? Um, so what happens if it's not documented on the 2848, the department will automatically place a limit of three years. So on the last slide, we were talking about the Iowa 2848. So that's when the taxpayer wants to appoint somebody as their representative. Um, but there are lots of situations where outside of that, situation or outside of the department that a representative already has that authority. Um, so let's let's think about times when a guardian is appointed by a court or you're an executor of an estate or you're the tax manager of your company and you already have the authority to act. So you have that authority based on your position. Um, some authority that you have inherently, and it's not the taxpayer that's appointing you directly through the Department of Revenue. So that's where this form comes in. The representative certification form is to tell us about that authority. So, some, so when you complete this form and you submit it, specific documentation may need to be provided based on the type of representative you are. So if you are the executor, um, an example would be that we may need a copy of the will or a court order. Um, if you're a legal guardian, um, we have seen court orders submitted with that. And there may be different documentation requirements that are based on the type that you choose. So if you have questions about the form, um, I would recommend that you head out to our website. Um, again, I'll show you where that is here in a couple slides. Um, and then you can also contact our taxpayer services team and they can help you through uh, walk through the representative certification form. And then what we'll talk about next is um, we'll talk about the business processes in place at the department. Um, so we know what the forms are. Now, what do you do with them? So in order to authorize a third party, you have a couple different options. One, you can submit the authorization form through GovConnect Iowa after you're connected to the tax accounts. Or two, you can complete and mail the third party forms. Um, I will tell you that we used to accept federal forms or other third party forms that were not Iowa specific. Um, sometimes they came in where, you know, the federal or, or the IRS was crossed out and Iowa was added. Obviously, that's, that's not as secure as we'd like to be. Um, so this process has changed. And so we will only accept Iowa forms now and no substitutions are allowed. Um, this process changed because we want to make sure that the taxpayer knows that um, whoever they appoint is reviewing Iowa specific information and that they're acknowledging and approving that responsibility. Um, since we expect the taxpayers to be knowledgeable of these actions, um, we do require that authorized individuals sign certain Iowa third party forms. 
Um, so one form that may be exempt from this requirement of authorized individuals is the representative certification form. Um, since this form is the representative telling us that they have the authority, this form will likely be submitted by the representative of the company, so they would be able to sign it. Again, refer to those instructions, refer to the website as you're completing those forms, and reach out if you have any questions. And then another piece of information is regarding signatures. Due to updated guidance from the IRS, the three main forms that we've been reviewing today, they must be signed by hand or via a digital signature that has a digital certificate. Stamped or typed signatures are not accepted. Um, one question that we get is what is a digital signature and how is it different from an e-signature? So an e-signature would be typing it out and sending it that way. A digital signature with a digital certificate is where we ask you to utilize a software that offers a type of electronic signature that uses encryption technology that basically underlies and verifies that signature. So an example of some of those providers would be DocuSign, Adobe Sign, DotLoop, and many, many more. Um, if you Google digital signatures, you can find a slew of information and available providers. So once your third party form is submitted, it is sent to our registration team for review. And so this is where our dedicated third party team will review it and they will either approve it, deny it, or they may request more information from you. Um, we reached out to our registration team prior to the webinar to hear the most common reasons for rejection um, because we wanted to provide those to you to help you figure out where some of the gaps may be if your form's getting rejected. So most commonly, forms are rejected due to authorized individuals not signing the forms. So prior to submitting a form, um, you will want to make sure that the right authorized individuals are already registered with the department so the form can be processed. Um, they did provide some other common reasons a form may be rejected. Um, the first one here is that the department will only accept the most recent version of the form. Um, so it's important that you're pulling them directly from our website. We do not accept outdated versions. Um, so then in turn, if you do submit one of those, it would likely be denied. We don't accept forms that were signed and dated more than six months ago. Um, so think of it like a check. Those are no longer valid and neither will these forms um, after six months. Um, so if you have one of these forms, you will have to resubmit it with an updated signature and date. The next one that we talked about um, is the e-signature. So those are not accepted and we require um, that it's either signed by hand or that you have a digital signature. Another reason is that the representative submitting the representative certification form provided the entity's FEIN, not their individual ID number, such as their social security number. Um, the next one, also with the representative certification form, you can select either general or durable POA. If either of those options are selected, additional documentation is required, and oftentimes that document is not included with the form. And then lastly, additional documentation is not provided at the time of submission. So that's why it's important to just take a, a final read through of the instructions and the form and just make sure that you're submitting all of the documentation that we're requesting. Um, we do include instructions for next steps on the letters that we send. So if you have any questions, I'd recommend reading down at the bottom of the letter. Um, a lot of times you'll see something that says next steps or what should I do now? Um, you can read that and proceed that way, or you can reach out to the number that's listed on that letter. So we talked about authorizing third parties in the last few slides. So let's talk about the review process when it's complete. How do you know who currently has third party authorization? The best way would be to be connected to the tax account in GovConnect Iowa. 
So the best place to look is the revoke or withdraw link under the third party authorization panel on the I want to tab. That will show you a current listing of who currently has third party authorization. Um, you would just wanna make sure, you know, unless you plan to revoke or withdraw that person or that um, authorized individual that you just don't move forward with that web request. And then the second option to know who's authorized is by contacting taxpayer services. So they will be able to share this information with an authorized representative. So let's talk about revoking an authorized third party now. Um, a good example that we've seen is that say a business owner decides to change their tax preparer, their tax firm. Um, so this means that a new preparer would be handling their tax affairs. This means that the prior tax preparer's authorization needs to be revoked and a new tax preparer should be authorized. So to do that, you have multiple options. Um, the first option is to connect to the tax accounts via GovConnect Iowa and revoke that third party. The second option is to notify the department in writing. Um, I will say that we do have um, examples and we do have specific requirements on our website. And if you go out there, you would be able to view it. And then another um, piece to keep in mind is what happens if you, or can you accidentally revoke someone? The answer is that you possibly could. Um, so it's important to note that when a new Iowa 2848 form is submitted, that all prior Iowa 2848 forms are revoked. And so this means that if you're submitting an updated 2848, make sure that you're listing all of the POAs that should be able to act. If you don't, this could mean that those other third parties are then revoked. And then another important no or common question that our third party team gets um, is that spouses filing on the same tax return must complete separate Iowa 2848 forms. So what we'll talk about next are um, Iowa account numbers and these apply directly to third parties. So, the question that we get is we refer to them as Ian's. And so what's an Ian? An Ian is used to aid in identifying the third party to the department without using their social security number or other personal numbers. Um, so, so what we've heard from third parties in the past is that when you're completing third party forms, you may not be comfortable sharing your social security number. So this is, allows you to have an alternative number that you can provide to the department that is related just to you. So who would use one? Um, the third party would use an Ian on any future third party access form or when they're contacting the department on behalf of whom they have been, given, um, been granted authority. Um, what do you do if you don't have an Ian? You can submit the request an Iowa account number link on GovConnect Iowa. And then what happens if you forget it is you can contact taxpayer services and they will be able to um, locate that number for you. And then another question that we get is what's the difference between an IDR ID and an EN? So an IDR ID is what you see on GovConnect Iowa um, right in the top left-hand corner underneath the business name. Um, so that's a unique identifying number that's assigned to the business or the individual. Whereas an EN is for third parties as an alternative to using their social security number. Um, another common question that we get is what if I have questions about my federal taxes? Um, the Iowa Department of Revenue is for state of Iowa taxes only, so we cannot communicate with you or we can't share federal tax information. Um, so like I said, we cannot release it. And so if you have questions about your federal taxes, we recommend that you contact the IRS, which is the Internal Revenue Service, um, for information regarding the release of the federal tax information. So um, the question yeah, that I think is gonna know because I've said it several times is go out to our website. The question that you may be asking is, okay, 
I'm at, I'm at your website, I'm a little lost, where do I go? So when you go out to tax.iowa.gov, um, up at the top, you're going to have, you're going to see these drop down menus and you're going to go to resources. And on that drop down, you're gonna see the first one, which is law and policy information. When you click that, you're going to, going to see a list of available resources there for you. And the one that you're looking for is down at the bottom and it's third party authorization. This will include all of the information that I've covered today, as well as um, tables to help you identify which form you should use and a little bit more information that you may need. So what we'll do now um, is I'm gonna open it up for Q&A, whether it's about GovConnect Iowa access, if it's about third parties. Um, we wanna try to answer any of the questions or or address any frustrations that you may be experiencing. Um, so I'm gonna take a pause here and go ahead and head out to the Q&A. Patrick, have you seen any come through? I, mean, I think the ones that have come through, Tara has been an absolute champion in answering. So if you did put a question in there, be sure to, to check in your answer tab um, where Tara may have uh, typed a response to you. Um, but Jacob, I think great job covering a lot of that information. I think really good pieces of information to, uh, to answer um, and to learn. And I think definitely a lot of nuance in there that you were able to cover, I think um, makes a lot of sense. Um, so if you're still here watching with us, if you have questions on the, some of the specific things or just general GovConnect Iowa questions, um, go ahead and put those in the Q&A box. Um, and Jake, if you wanna go to your next slide, I think we've got a couple other resources things and maybe you can kind of talk through on how people can find help um, for themselves. Yeah, we sure do. Um, so we have multiple different options for you. So one of them is going to be um, for guidance and detailed information. You can visit our website, which is that first link. Um, this is a PowerPoint that you're going to get. So feel free to refer to this later on, um, or you can go out to the help link on the tax Iowa gov website um, and then we also have youtube um, video tutorials that are out there um, some of which you'll hear my voice again um, just doing like an instructional walkthrough guide of various web requests that are out there um, I do also recommend that you subscribe to updates. And so we provide updates via our Gov delivery service. So you can subscribe to them on our website. And so again, that's tax.iowa.gov. And you would scroll down to the bottom of the screen and you're going to see a big red button that says subscribe. And then if you need further assistance, I'm always going to ask, you know, that you rely on taxpayer services. Um, they're obviously a very busy team, um, but they're they're great. They know what they're talking about. We have um, great training programs available on our end to make sure that they're up to speed to respond to your questions. Um, so one of our specialists would be able to assist you. Um, so I'm going to leave this information up here for a few minutes. And Patrick, we'll go ahead and head back to the Q&A and see if there's anything else that came through. And it looks like Tara, Tara, you are amazing. <laughs> Tara is able to answer all of your questions she, that I've seen so far. <laughs> yep, she's been able to, to handle them. So um, I do think, too, if you do have specific questions that do come to your specific case or your abilities to access or use, you know, DevConnect Iowa, like Jerica said, contacting taxpayer services is the, is the best way to go. And I believe that best email address is idr at iowa.gov. You got it. Yep. It's idr at iowa.gov. You can send your email there. And we do have a, a team of specialists that are there to help you as well. And it may even be Tara. <laughs> <laughs> may even be Tara. So um, I think with that, we, we can give it a couple other minutes. Um, if As you're completing rollout two, um, and maybe you don't have any speculation, but I know there's a, a big timeline a lot of the other things that are coming up um, for GovConnect Iowa. Can you share just a little bit as we are looking towards the rest of 2023? I'm futuristic. I'm optimistic. You know, Jerica, I know there's going to be other new features coming. Um, I mean, if there's some of those things that um, maybe we can share for a minute or we can just talk to for a moment. And then if we don't have any questions, uh, we'll wrap up a little bit early. 
Yeah, definitely. That is a good question. So in 2023, we do have slated what we're calling rollout three. And so our modernization program is a multi-year effort. So it started in 2021 with rollout one, which was think of it as um, your business taxes. So that's sales and use, withholding, motor fuel, rollout two, which is what you're hearing now, was released November of 2022. And so the, those were your corporate income or your pass-through entities. And so rollout out three is what we're currently working on right now, which is individual income, fiduciary, and inheritance. And so the updates to those processes and the updates to GovConnect Iowa will be released in November 2023. Um, what it looks like at that point moving forward um, is you're going to see a, a, an additional rollout and rollout four. Um, so that's going to cover like cigarette and tobacco tax, along with a couple other tax types that are out there. So we do have a ton of exciting stuff coming in the future and gov deliveries where you're going to hear that. Um, so I recommend you go out there and subscribe and that's where you're going to get those updates. Awesome. Well, the, the Q&A box is still clear. So I think we'll go ahead. Um, thank you again. Thank you to all of our presenters from each of the agencies, from um, Department of Inspections and Appeals, uh, Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division, Iowa Lottery Authority, um, and the Iowa Department of Revenue. Appreciate all of the the time today information, you'll be able to get a link to the recording. All the slides are available on iowasourcing.com. So on behalf of the you and I, John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center, Economic Development Authority and Iowa Sourcing, thanks for attending. And we'll hopefully see you back here uh, later in 2023 um, for some more uh, tax webinars. Thanks, Patrick. All right. Take care, everybody.